Hey guys, I'm Dieter Melhorn. I'm going to go over some catfish rod basics here uh, for folks that, one, may be starting out, or two, that are looking to upgrade some of the stuff that they've got. I'm going to go over some of the different uh, things that I've learned, uh, a lot of it from mistakes I've made over the years in buying tackle for chasing catfish. Now, if you're starting out, don't spend a lot of money. Uh, that's probably contrary to what a lot of the rod manufacturers want me to say, but uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to start out, and I'll be honest with you, don't go do it. Uh, I would rather see you spend a little bit of money and get a rod that may be a little undergeared uh, for monster fish than to be intimidated by having to spend 50, 70, 90, 100, 120, 150 dollars to get one rod combo that will catch all these monster fish. Here's the deal. Get something, a, a Walmart combo. You can get a spinning rod combo. Spinning rod's easy to go with. It's easy to throw. Not a lot of work, not a lot of effort, not a lot of learning. You can get into some of these for 50, 60 bucks. Put you some 20 pound line on it uh, and rig it up with a decent leader. You can catch a lot of fish on that size rod. Now, if you want to up the game a little bit uh, for a little bit more money, you can get into something that Shakespeare sells, the ugly stick uh, catfish rod. Everybody knows what an ugly stick is. Uh, I, I think they do anyway. It's a very popular name in the fishing world. They sell them at Walmart too, and they're readily, av readily available in all the big box stores like Academy, Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's. These things you can get into, the rod themselves is about 35 bucks. You can get an affordable reel for about another 40 to $60. Now you can go with a more expensive reel, a high-end Abu Garcia, but there's a lot of stuff out there uh, in that middle range that will keep you under a hundred bucks for a rod. And uh, for that, with that set up, I guarantee you, you can catch anything that you hook into. Spool it up with some 20 or 30 pound line and you're set. Now, granted, if you're fishing some rivers, heavy kind of current, that kind of thing, as you kind of move and progress into that, Going with something a little bit heavier is not a bad idea. And that's where a lot of these catfish brand rods come in. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of rods out there. If you start doing a little research and you're fairly new, or if you've been in the business or been in the business for a while chasing big catfish, you know these names. People like Catch the Fever, uh, Whisker Seeker, BM. All of these guys make rods that are designed for the catfish angler. Now, which one is the best? I'm going to be honest with you, uh, they're all really, really good. I'm not going to throw a tag of the best on one. Uh, I've had a chance to play with a bunch of them, uh, fish with a bunch of them, and they've all got really good components, really well built, and you know they're all pretty much in the same price point. They all seem to be in that $70 to $90 price point, somewhere in there. The bad thing about these rods is, and what will get you when it comes time to buy one is that most of these catfish brand rods are not widely distributed. You can't go to a Gabela's, you can't go to an Academy, you can't go to Walmart to buy one. So you are forced to pay shipping if you order one from them. And shipping on a rod is expensive. Uh, don't feel like they're gouging you. Uh, just the cost of the container and because of its odd long size, it's kind of expensive to ship these things. So you can end up paying 25 bucks for one rod or for six of them. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's one of the great things about the Catfish Conference every year. You go to the Catfish Conference, every catfish rod manufacturer in the country is there. And it's a great place to get the rods and avoid the shipping cost of bringing them back home with you. Now, which one of these catfish brand rods do you go with? Well, I'm going to be honest. Take a look at them uh, and see what trips your trigger emotionally. I honestly think uh, that is really the big difference between all of them is what the emotional attachment is for you as an angler. Some people like little subtle things differently. Uh, it may be what the handle is made out of, what the pattern is on the handle, the shape of some of the you know real seats or what kind of... The bottom line is they're all going to catch fish. And out of these rods, they'll catch any fish in America, period. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. And they'll catch half the fish in the ocean, too. They're well-built, sturdy rods. Um, I think a lot of it comes down to an emotional attachment. And uh, that may be to the name. It may be to the brand. It may be to the people who make them. Uh, it may be to the color of the rod. I was on to Big Cat Fever for a long time to make a white rod because I loved having white rods when I'm fishing at night. Um, I've seen one of the B&M poles that they've got out. It's red. 
And if you ever seen my boat, you know I like red. I got a red seat, I got a red bimini top. So uh, it's stuff like that that can really kind of really be the deciding factor. So don't feel like if you're looking at getting one of these catfish brand rods that like, oh man, I'm gonna make the wrong decision and I'm gonna buy this one when this one was actually better. There's really not that big of a difference between any of the brands is what you like and what that little subtle difference is that makes you want to buy it. Now, most of these rods I've been talking about are really, honestly, more designed for anglers fishing from the boat or anglers that are fishing from the bank that are not trying to cast a really, really long way. I know a lot of you guys fishing off the bank try to utilize longer rods to get more leverage and more sling when you go to casting. And... Uh, a lot of these big catfish rod makers uh, aren't building rods that are specific to that market. So you may end up going with some of the surf casting rods out there, surf fishing rods from, uh, that are designed for saltwater fishing. They all work. They're all great. Uh, again, I think a lot of that is an emotional attachment to certain little subtle things that are particular to you and your style of fishing. And that's the big takeaway in all this, guys, is that Everybody has some different circumstances and situations and how they're fishing, where they're fishing and what they do. And uh, some of these subtle differences in some of these different brands are, uh, are, are, are good. They're good for people because it gives them something that may be particular and appealing to them. Well, folks, hopefully this short video gives you a little bit of stuff to think about. Give me some feedback on this. Uh, go to my website. DieterMillhornFishing.com. You can message me there uh, with any comments or questions that you got and uh, let me know what you think and let me know what else you want to hear about here. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and here are a couple of more videos that I think you're going to like.